Hello everyone, welcome to the cyber terrorism and uh, organized crime session. Uh, online extremism and cyber terror has become an important issue along with the development and the development of the internet and the social and political environments influence over the internet has changed a lot of things. And cyber attacks that compromise critical infrastructure pose a serious threat, which is considered as electronic Pearl Harbor by many. And recent evidence suggests that a range of incidents have occurred originating from nation state and non nation state actors alike. And you can uh, view this uh, actually, uh, view a report on, on the APT1 report that gives more import more information about the advanced uh, persistent threat attacks. What the advanced uh, persistent threat attack means that it's a well-developed and well-established attack beforehand. It takes sometimes uh, about a year and a year and a half to actually infiltrate a system, but the APTs usually take uh, uh, a lot of time in terms of its planning and strategies. And then one of the uh, strategy of an APT attack is to clear the evidence from the targeted systems. So APTs are very advanced and uh, you can find an APT report from the Mandian's website. I'll share it on the, uh, on the uh, Blackboard today. And uh, let's first define what the terror is actually. Terror is a, a form of political expression can, which can take multiple forms ranging from nonviolent expression to serious violence. And the internet adds on additional value for this kind of expression. It gives a lot of opportunity for people to anonymously uh, share the uh, share the their expressions and letter writing posting on social media and YouTube can be uh, considered an in involvement of this kinds of uh, political expression vandalism and web defacement we'll talk about web defacement later uh, can also be used uh, for uh, or by some groups or sometimes by uh, political groups, by also terrorist groups as well. And hacktivism using hacking techniques to promote an activist agenda is also utilized by uh, criminal groups. We'll also cover hacktivism more in this session. And terrorism is the most extreme form of political expression. The actual or threatened use of violence by an individual or group motivated by ideological or political objectives. So uh, there needs to be a threat of violence and also political or ideological objective uh, when we uh, when we want to define the extremist views or terrorism's terrorism that in actually in turn impacts the uh, internet usage and the spread of violent uh, information to the networks and cyber terrorists utilize similar tactics against information systems or computer resources to the same end so like the violent extremists terrorists also use uh, similar techniques and methods and also resources so this is important to know as Terrorism is a way of attacking to another country's uh, structure, but when this includes the cyber infrastructure, then remember the internet can give, or computer programming can give a multiplying effect and the country may, the attacked country may uh, be impacted by that multiplying effect of the attacks and this may in turn cause a lot of problem in the health, health services, and in other types types of government services. One of the most inclusive definition of cyber uh, terror uh, for cyber terror recognizes the utility of the internet as a communications or attack venue. 
So as the internet is a communication venue, the uh, hackers or the cyber terrorists always try to uh, take advantage of this communication venue and utilize their propaganda and resources to attack against another government. Uh, what this uh, what cyber terrorism means is that it is the premediated methodological ideology ideologically motivated dissemination of information facilitation of communication or attack against physical targets digital information computer systems and or computer programs which indeed uh, intended to cause social financial physical or psychological harm to non combatant non-combatant targets and audiences for the purpose of affecting ideological, political, or social change. So this is uh, very similar uh, to a traditional definition of terrorism, but keep in mind that uh, the definition of terrorism varies by countries, but this is according, according to the US uh, definition or any utilization of digital communication or information which facilitates such actions directly or indirectly. Whether the attack is uh, impacting directly or indirectly, it's, uh, it's a matter of terrorism and it's considered as cyber terrorism. And cyber terrorists also use the similar methods uh, as well as the uh, uh, use of internet and high technology, advanced technology in their, uh, uh, as their resources. And uh, the source of an attack can correspond to actors' motivations. So in order to understand the terrorism incident or any cyber terrorism incident, we actually need to understand the motivation behind the attacker, which defines, which actually, uh, which actually in turn uh, helps us to understand uh, the criminal intent and the motivation which also helps us to define the behavior. And not nation state sponsored attackers usually use theft or trade secrets and intellectual uh, property as a target. And uh, you can look at the Operation Aurora and non nation state sponsored attackers usually use DDoS attacks and web, deface, web defacements We'll go over uh, these attack types in the next slides. And the use of technology is a key uh, to attack uh, to another uh, government or uh, the system, especially for extremists and terrorist groups, uh, the spread of their ideology and beliefs uh, in a distributed fashion is quite important as they like to spread their information in as much as uh, they can uh, one of the biggest uh, motives of the uh, terrorists is to spread their information. And as the uh, internet brings more opportunities for the terrorist groups and extremists, it's an in invaluable resource for those people to attack against the uh, governments. And web page, forums, emails, chat rooms, and I am allow for the spread of propaganda and it is very hard to regulate the internet as there is no one uh, who is uh, solely responsible for the regulation of the internet and there is no hierarchy on the internet and this is not possible, obviously. And uh, the use of technology makes things uh, uh, easy to obtain or obtain the resources and tailored to specific audiences such uh, in such cases, terrorists take, can take advantage of music, videos, and interactive media to spread their information throughout the global networks. And another form of cyber terrorism is indoctrination and radicalization. The internet has value as a tool for recruitment and radicalization. And direct communications uh, to ideology uh, interested actors are social media forums, publication of online materials like magazines are very important to directly communicate the ideology of the uh, information spreaders in the case of uh, terrorism or cyber terrorism. 
So cyber terrorists try to indoctrinate uh, individuals or groups and radicalize people through disseminating this information usually and uh, try to take advantage of information war between uh, the country and the terrorist group. Electronic attacks are quite an important way for cyber criminals to anonymously attack to the system or target system and take advantage of their uh, their uh, ability to infiltrate the system and uh, you know there are a lot of websites that has vulnerabilities and uh, they may not even uh, have to take a, a very well planned action to attack to those systems and the computers and data that can be accessed through the internet provide a rich set of targets there are thousands of hundreds of thousands of or millions of targets for terrorists or extremist groups and nation states and SCADA system attacks are one of those remember we talked about the SCADA systems which you can later go back and uh, try to uh, make yourself more familiarized with this concept and uh, the terrorists can certainly attack financial industry targets and DDoS attacks will go it and is very important for uh, cyber terrorists to attack uh, in an easier way. And so one of the examples of these uh, types of attacks, cyber terrorist attacks, uh, is actually white power groups. Uh, it's like a neo-Nazi group and uh, skinhead movements, as well as the alt right, utilize the internet in various ways. And they're uh, indeed highly organized ca cadres and they use forums and communications, uh, also promote, promote uh, white power music labels, and they also do fundraising, raising, and they also try to indoctrinate the youth uh, through various methods by coloring books or using age appropriate materials to indoctrinate people and try to spread its ideology and uh, this may in turn cause violence obviously uh, in turn in a in a in a in about a year or so or maybe uh, a decade later but this also cause a lot of problems within the communities the e-jihad is a way of uh, 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 way that attackers islamic extremists and uh, terrorists use to attack uh, or use the internet, utilize the resources to attack the to the government websites. And there are several noteworthy incidents have occurred in, in incorporating traditional and simple hacking techniques. And they're usually using web defacements, DDoS attacks, and dissemination of hacking techniques are among the methods that the EEG hardware's uh, have been actually trying to uh, do for many years and they learn from each other. They actively use the social, social media and learn uh, more advanced techniques from others. And uh, there are many countries supporting these types of uh, attacks, obviously, and this could uh, definitely cause a cyber war. But keep in mind that Syri Syrians and uh, Iranians uh, from time to time or from time to time, they constantly try to attack the uh, government websites of the United States and many other resources or financial resources. So uh, this is another threat to the U.S. Uh, cybersecurity. And governments are cognizant of the value of cyber attacks against enemy, enemy nations. Cyber war has no agreed upon definition uh, specific, though there is a general agreement that it involves military operations utilizing virtual means to achieve similar ends to conventional attacks. And so we could see several prospective incidents of cyber war have occurred, Russian, Estonia conflict. You should definitely read more about it. I'll share uh, more resources about the, uh, I'll share resources about the Russian-Estonian Russian conflict. And in these days, we're seeing that 
there's a threat to the American uh, cyber infrastructure from Russian hackers that might occur, and there are also some attacks against the uh, against the uh, Russian websites and uh, government's websites, or especially the Belarusian websites, uh, are seemingly under attack by the cyber partisan group, and this also can cause a cyber war between different country, countries. And Stuxnet, Stuxnet is a good, very good example of how governments can infiltrate to stop the nuclear uh, power plants uh, in countries like Iran. And that's how the uh, war, I remember we talked about the, the definitions of viruses and worms and worms are able to self-propagate in a network without attaching itself onto a host file, file remember. And then the a worm file or, or a worm was used in a thumb drive uh, and uh, that thumb drive was in, in fact in uh, in uh, an Iranian uh, nuclear centrifuge, and that worm was able to locate the necessary uh, necessary uh, uh, systems to stop the nuclear central uh, nuclear system or nuclear centrifuge, and it took uh, many years for Iranians to. Uh, take the things uh, back to normal. So you can read more about the Stuxnet. There are a lot of resources that you can learn about the terrorism is incidents or governments infiltrations against another government. And uh, in terms of terrorist ac activities, you can find a lot of examples that the Iranians or Syrians are attacking to uh, other governments' websites and defacing the, those websites and uh, putting their own propaganda. And cyber, cyber war is uh, also a, an information war, warfare uh, and it has uh, spread also online. Uh, it is the use of information and communication technology to gain advantage over opponents. And this uh, this information campaigns from Russian trolls has actually impacted the or spread it the uh, uh, to the uh, U.S. 2016 election, and it also if the cyber war also tries to impact the, the governments in Europe through fake news. So the importance of the cyber war and cyber terrorism is not limited to the hacking activities, but uh, in uh, given terrorist incidents, we should acknowledge that the uh, terrorist groups uh, mainly utilizes the uh, spread of information, this is this information throughout the network. So this is important uh, to notice that the governments has to uh, have to deal with such uh, attacks uh, throughout the internet and clarifying or clearing such. Uh, information uh, through the social media is quite an important aspect and social media uh, uh, companies has to have to deal with such uh, problems along with the uh, support of governments. Uh, legislating extremism, free speech rights in the U.S. make it difficult to pursue legal action against those who, who promote radical agendas online. So free uh, speech rights are very strong in the United States and it's very hard to deal and tackle with those actually uh, uh, information or misinformation spreaders. And many other nations have criminalized the hate speech and online threats and UK Public Order Act 9086 is one of them and COC article regarding the racist and xenophobic uh, material is also crime in, uh, in another way. So legisla legislating extremism or legislation related with extremism is quite an important matter to deal with such uh, spread of uh, information from the terrorist networks or organizations. And the U.S. Uh, Computer Fraud Act has been strengthened to pursue hacking cases uh, that may have 
uh, relationship to extremism or terror groups. That's what you are supposed to use or uh, understand as a cybercrime investigator. The uniting and strengthening America by providing appropriate tools required to intercept and obstruct terrorism act of 2001 also extended that's what called as uh, USA Patriot Act uh, ex actually extended the laws related with the extremism and modified language to allow investigations in foreign nations so long as it's a legitimate case within the country and similar uh, regis legislation is present in uh, Canada. So after 9-11 attacks, U.S. has changed uh, the legislation and addressed the extremist uh, extremism pr uh, problem uh, all across the globe, whether it's an international matter or local matter, it's ne it needs to be dealt with and the government made some change using the Patriot Act and CFA also has uh, some uh, definition about the hacking cases and uh, their relevance with the ex extremist groups. And federal surveillance statutes are also important. Electronic Co Communications Privacy Act, ECPA, uh, actually deals with uh, or addresses the stored data, such as emails, logs, or subscriber information, uh, which can be obtained through the ECPA and basic subscriber information can easily be subpoenaed and uh, opened email can be subpoenaed, uh, but customer notification is typically notified if the, uh, the email uh, of the user uh, actually subpoenaed. And court orders must be obtained to get logs and transactions. So this is an, uh, another important matter for you that the court orders must be obtained to get the logs and transactions in a given investigation. And search warrants can be obtained to get full account records without uh, custom records, without customer notification. So search warrant is also very useful to get uh, detailed information or, or full account records uh, from the uh, organization or uh, ser specifically server. In the US, the National Security Agency plays a key role in securing cyberspace, charged with designing and man maintaining computerized coding systems to protect information systems. So NSA uh, is uh, quite an important uh, uh, organization for the United States into maintaining computerized coding systems to protect information systems. And uh, as far as I know, uh, NSA has the highest number of mathematicians and they work very hard on cryptography and uh, developing cryptography and also deciphering cryptography is also very important for the NSA as an organization. And it's uh, known that uh, NSA implemented the PRISM program in 2007 to collect electronic communications data from various service providers for intelligence analysis. So PRISM was a, a key program uh, to, to collect electronic uh, communication data and intelligence can be very important to, uh, to deal with uh, uh, terrorist activities beforehand. The Department of Energy protects energy production programs and systems and operates the Office of Intelligence and Counterintelligence. And it has also some, uh, some specific uh, system or organization structure to counter intelligence, the cyber attacks, and operates the incident management program which responds to cyber threats in conjunction with the US, US CERT. And US CERT quite uh, an important organization for the United States to deal with the uh, cybersecurity violations and incidents and also U.S. search uh, analyzes the uh, vulnerabilities and cyber attacks and help the organizations and governments to actually uh, to develop a, a robust uh, response system, incident response system. 
The Department of Homeland Security is a cabinet level department consolidating multiple agencies under a single department. And the HS uh, also houses the National Cybersecurity and Communication Integration Center to connect agencies that protect critical infrastructure. So uh, the purpose of the Homeland Security is to uh, is to protect the homeland security through the cyber infrastructure as well, not just with the military or policing, but also it has an, a defense uh, understanding and philosophy to deal with the cyber attacks beforehand and try to uh, try to strengthen the system and infrastructure of the U.S. Uh, cyber infrastructure and also. Uh, Department of Homeland Security operates the National Cybersecurity Division, builds the National Cyberspace Response System, and implements a cyber risk management. The UK operates the Center for the Protection of National Infrastructure, CPNI, to handle emergent threats. That's how the UK deals with the emergent threats and Australia runs the Critical Infrastructure Center. So uh, here, what I want to say to you is the infrastructure is very important because the infrastructure protects the whole or it's the backbone of the whole nation and protecting the infrastructure is quite an important matter to deal with cyber crime, to deal with cyber terrorism and cyber organized crime is can on or can on may be uh, defended through the protection of uh, critical infrastructure. And the response to cyber war is managed by the Department of Defense in the United States, DOD, so different from the Homeland Security Department. Uh, Department of Defense have more robust capacity or responsibility, DHS also has responsibility to protect uh, the uh, cyber infrastructure of the U.S. But when it comes to specifically cyber war, war and response, uh, the Department of Defense in the U.S. is uh, in a critical role. And the U.S. Cyber Command, U.S. Cybercom manages the defense of cyberspace and critical, critical infrastructure. And part of the United States Strategic Command, uh, USS uh, TR uh, threat com also is important uh, to deal uh, with the cyber war and response to rogue governments. And there are similar entities existing governments around the world, world and militaries also have extended their capacity in the cyberspace and they have been uh, practicing cyber war for many decades and cyberspace has become another field of a battle between countries. And hacktivism has become a greater interest when U.S. classified government documents were disclosed by WikiLeaks and then the WikiLeaks uh, servers were targeted by the jester who is known as patriotic hacker. And hacktivism has become an imp became an important matter uh, actually after the WikiLeaks uh, attacks in, into U.S. cyber in, in, uh, intelligence. And hacktivism is defined as engaging in malicious cyber activity to uphold a political agenda, religious principle, or social principles. Hacktivism is purposeful access to systems without authorization with the purpose of overwhelming systems for political ends. So there needs to be a political end and the uh, group needs to be engaging with uh, malicious activities for purposeful access to systems without authorization. Okay, and hacktivism is an illegal public use of technology by a group linked to a political cause or for social religious impact. That's another definition. And hacktivists uh, usually take advantage of different types of attacks against their target which are mostly cynical and some of the examples of 
these attacks, common attack types are the first one is doxing, and the second is distributed denial of service attack, and web defacement and social media hijacking are among those hacktivist groups have been using uh, for several years. Doxing makes one's identity public usually by modifying or by creating, creating embarrassments against high-profile public or private entities. And when, for instance, someone leaks your sensitive or personally protected information online without your consent for taking, uh, for instance, a revenge, personal revenge from you or uh, tries to harass or pro prove their point, uh, they actually try to infiltrate your information and then disseminate or uh, distribute that information uh, on the global network or internet. And uh, one of the purpose of dox uh, purpose the purposes of doxing is victim shaming and personal revenge, publicity, demonstrating anger or disagreement with a particular community cause, and scaring or intimidating victims victims are among the uh, uh, the purposes of doxing. Uh, doxing uh, uh, actually operates uh, in uh, by or by pu pulling data from a leaky database. So th there are databases that the hackers can attack or find vulnerabilities or uh, maybe find some open doors or ports into the system and can able to access some of the information uh, due to misconfiguration of the database. And they pull the data from a leaky database and execute soft, sophisticated phishing and spoofing attacks to manipulate you into sharing your information. And hacking the system uh, to gain unauthorized access to information stored on your computer or uh, mobile device is another method uh, that how the uh, hackers or criminals uh, gathers your information and stalking your uh, your and your friends relatives social media or from uh, uh, different online uh, directories or public databases are among the methods or modus operandi of the uh, attackers who perpetrate doxing in a distributed denial of service attack uh, and numerous uh, computers or thousands of computers are employed to produce a disproportionate amount of network traffic on an internet facing object, which means a computer server or a network server, whatever it is on the internet that serves the, the, the clients or people all across uh, the nation or globe uh, are being attacked by the DDoS attacks and among all ma major hacktivism methods DDoS attacks has gained a more public attention and impact and highly linked with uh, hacktivism. While DDoS attacks uh, deplete the target systems, the real impact due to uh, intrusion is uh, really hidden. It's hard to understand the complete uh, impact of the DDoS attack. What DDoS attack means is that the attackers uh, uh, congregate or the, uh, the malwares uh, take control of thousands of computers and attack against a server or a computer network and the network uh, usually uh, paralyzed uh, and not being able to not able to respond to the traditional uh, users of the system or legal users of the system. It's like flooding a street with thousands of people and what, what happens, uh, thousands of, a thousand people gets together in a short, uh, in a short distance of the street and, and then occupy the street and then the legitimate uh, pedestrians will not be able to use the street uh, as there, there's a flood of uh, human beings in the street and legitimate users are not being able to serve, or will not be served by the uh, street like you can consider street as a network or computer that has to 
uh, respond to, to the uh, clients. And hacktivists such as Anonymous have reached popularity due to their involvement against many organizations and governments through the use of DDoS attacks. Web defacement is similar to drawing graffiti on a wall, or only it happens uh, virtually. Websites' appearance change in pic through pictures or words as they are scrolled across the defaced website. website. Web defacement is uh, making visual change on the appearance of the website for making political claims or for condemnation of an individual institution or political entity. Websites, why websites are uh, defaced? Attackers may have diff different motivations when they deface a website. Uh, there could be political motivation and attackers who are against a government or a particular moment can choose to deface related website to air their views. Attackers who do this are as known as hacktivists and they may change the content of the defaced website with a picture or message of their choice. And uh, uh, 51 US government websites uh, got defaced uh, recently and two Iranians defaced at least uh, 51 US government websites in 2020 uh, to show their resentment and anger towards the assassination of Iranians, uh, Iran's military general uh, Qasem Soleimani. And uh, the attackers also attacked to the best of uh, Minneapolis.org uh, and uh, it got hacked and it was showing late Qasem Soleimani's image with hackers email address, social media handle and the message down with America. So that's the one way the uh, government such as Iran uh, tries to, to uh, protest the US government. And Indian Indian de defense military website was also defaced. Some alleged uh, Chinese hackers hacked the uh, Indian Ministry of Defense, which is an important uh, website for the for India. Defaced it and made it non-functional, and there was a, an error message on the website. The purpose behind this web defacement was not only to cause operational disruption, but also to embarrass the, in the Indian government by indicating that the, they couldn't defend their uh, defense ministry website. So this, is, uh, this can cause an embarrassment on the government employees, and it's an important uh, matter for government to defend, uh, to defend its website in, in, the, in the past, what we were what we have been talking actually is to protect the borders, but nowadays you have to protect your website to uh, protect the, the, the importance uh, given to the cybersecurity uh, by your government. And another uh, important example uh, attack is against the Spanish pres presidency website. Uh, which defaced with Mr. Bean's image and a Spanish presidency web website, EU 2010, was hacked and defaced by some hackers. Although the entire site was kept functional, the Spanish Prime Minister Jose Luis Rodriguez, uh, this image was replaced with the comedian uh, Atkinson, who played Mr. Bean in popular TV shows and movies. So this is another way of attacking against a government website. And uh, the next uh, option that the hacktivists uh, have been utilizing or using is social, social media hacking. Uh, it, it was originally equated to hacking whereby the hacker uh, would illegally access the login and password of the owner of the page and make change or post commands on the page. Organi organized activists can easily and legally ta take uh, over a corporation's uh, social media page. So this is another uh, method that the attackers hijack the system and uh, can easily take the uh, corporation's social media website. 
and Facebook's open comment, open comment pl platform and the internet's uh, anonymity create a perfect place for a public outrage to break out in on the walls uh, of a corporation's social media web page. And I uh, will go over the Belarus case and Belarus have been going through a lot of conflict on the internet, ju not just inside the country, but also on the internet. And it's a very hot topic in terms of the Ukrainian uh, conflict with the uh, with Russia, the actually war between the Russia and Ukraine is still continuing. And uh, there, there is an example uh, of Belarus, how the hackers uh, are uh, reflecting their uh, views against the government. And there are uh, similar things in the Ukraine that uh, there are a lot of, uh, in terms of the Ukraine, there are a lot of Russians who are discontent with what's happening against the Ukraine. And uh, similarly, Belarus uh, also is a field where the people of Belarus are unhappy with the government. The joining of a hacker groups and activists, uh, activists, activists create a significant challenge to countries, uh, cyber infrastructure and business and the automated nature of programming in uh, cyberspace and global me membership to such activists with the number of readily available tools make the, makes the cyber activism more threatening, especially for those systems lacking uh, stable infrastructure. So the uh, IT uh, people who were either uh, retired or dismissed from their jobs uh, have been using hacking as an activity to, to protest the uh, Belarus and its uh, closeness with the Russian government. When we look at the Belarus, uh, uh, there was a continuum of development since World War II. And after the uh, dissolution of Soviet Union, uh, the uh, Belarus actually held independent elections and Lukashenko uh, became the president, but uh, later on he did not get closer with the Europe and didn't want to uh, get or receive a Western influence in Belarus. And this actually Lukashenko and parliament replaced with appointed representative in 2006 and uh, actually the uh, election was uh, uh, actually considered frivolous or fraud uh, began in 2016 uh, during the uh, uh, elections and multiple election fraud uh, claims were piled and Belarus's uh, strongman Lukashenko replaced the intelligence leadership as protests continue uh, 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 to uh, to protest him, uh, actually. And you can look at later some of the uh, global metrics that are related with Belarus and its democracy, which is on the right screen of, uh, which is on the right screen of this slide. And uh, the uh, President Lukashenko and its and his administration caused, uh, caused a, a problem in the country, caused uh, protests and fear in the country. And uh, people needed uh, uh, to be heard. And uh, there has been a deterioration of trust uh, to the leadership in Belarus for many years. And people started using uh, internet uh, by criminal means to protect the Belarus government. And hacktivism is uh, again an illegal public use of technology by a group linked to political cause or for uh, social or religious impact. Uh, Lukashenko used several election tools to uh, strengthen its authoritarianism. Electoral uh, authoritarianism is one of them, uh, which summed up by the observation that it's a system in which opposition parties always lose elections and incumbents routinely abuse, uh, abuse state resources and Belarusian authorities benefit from 
practice of politics in favor of the current system. And neopatrimonialism is another method which those who contribute to the regime's success success at the ballot box and ballot box and receive collective goods and benefits. And the next uh, tool is the element of adaptation, seeking consent as well as employing coercion, uh, demonstrating demonstrating pragmatism, expediency, and opportunism to modify and adapt how these features are perceived at any given time. Uh, cyber partisan activity in Belarus that protects protest the uh, Belarusian government is about fostering change and uh, Lukashenko, Lukashenko's political platform actually uh, does, doesn't allow this but uh, the uh, campaign of uh, uh, the uh, Belarusian government or the Lukashenko uh, government uh, ensure that uh, Lukashenko is the man of the people, ensuring domestic socio-economic stability was reliance on uh, Russian economic uh, support. And patriotic uh, defense of state sovereignty by the authorities under Lukashenko was another method to, to uh, uh, defend its system, but there's no defense of the sovereignty of the people. And there is another method the uh, Belarusian government have been, has been utilizing is fear-mongering uh, concept of enemy uh, pro projected to the people. So uh, this is another method that the politicians uh, of Belarusians use uh, against their will of citizens. And uh, when we look at the cyber partisan profile or role, they used DDoS attacks and uh, they protested the 2020 hacktivism, uh, 2020 elections by hacktivism. And uh, there's a high government investment in IT cybersecurity infrastructure in Belarus, but the, there are 60,000 experts in over 900 companies at high technologies park in MISC. Minsk and must do not accept the uh, uh, Lukashenko regime uh, according to the cyber partisan uh, 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 cyber partisans uh, suggestions and uh, uh, cyber partisans have been successfully implement implementing uh, the compromisation of dozens of government ID IT systems through the use of distributed denial of service attacks and web defacement methods. And Belarus may establish large hacker groups impacting global security and there would be no provisional transitional government leading to national and the Eastern region uh, social and economic uh, instability, which means is that the Belarusian, the attacks in Belarus uh, can help hacker community to advance their self, but this may in turn uh, cause more instability in the, on the internet. And uh, the, uh, this problem is very hard to solve. On the one hand, people need to protest uh, uh, to gain their rights, but on the other hand, you know, when they uh, learn hacking and become hacker, there may be some subgroups or subculture that may affect the European and uh, US uh, cyber security. And uh, you can uh, find many resources uh, on the web that uh, world uh, leaders have imposed sanctions against the Belarus government. And the Russian partnership where actors consider uh, power legitimate uh, because they do not know what their real interests are, one of the uh, uh, claims of the uh, uh, hackers in or hacktivist groups in Belarus. And the lack of uh, political competition is another threat to the Belarusian uh, society and authoritarian regimes have proved highly resilient, but the resilience is not equal to legitim legitimacy. They, they have a resilient government and politicians, but
but there's no tolerance for the uh, idea or ideology of people who would like who want to protest their government uh, and it's, it's not uh, resilient authoritarianism do not uh, tolerate any uh, any protests and uh, any intentional or will of the people to make change or do, to work for the betterment of uh, their society a Belarusian hacktivist group uh, recently says that uh, it has launched a limited cyber attack on the national railway company aimed at impeding the movement of Russian troops and freight inside the Moscow allied country. And it said that uh, uh, it encrypted some servers, database, and workstations. And the group uh, said it had disrupted the online sale of uh, tickets in Monday's attack and was working to fix that as it did not intend to uh, disturb regular passenger service. So on the one hand, uh, the uh, Belarusian hackers do want to pro protect their uh, citizens and the system, but on the other hand, try, they try to, to uh, infiltrate to the government websites to protest the government. And the Belarusian railway said its web resources were inaccessible and online ticket sales were halted for unspecified technical reasons. So the uh, problem has been uh, has been uh, growing in the Belarusian uh, internet uh, cyber infrastructure, and this actually impacts the regular citizens, whether knowingly or unknowingly. But the political uh, conflict is also cause of the uh, attacks by the cyber partisan groups. And when we look at the cyber partisans, uh, uh, only the uh, when we look at if they're using the social media or using encrypted communication tools, only the results of their activity get into the social media. So they do not, not really uh, uh, or practically uh, communicate uh, through the social media. And but there's a communication between the population and the cyber. Uh, partisans and uh, they co uh, conduct uh, courses on how to properly use software to hide information and they disseminate information on the planet shares in reality there's not a single name of who the partisans are they are the they are a group of uh, people that uh, are uh, joining uh, to protest the Belarusian government and there are some examples of Asian officers in particular there's a YouTube channel which you can find uh, about the information about the protests of the Belarusian cyber part the next part of this uh, session is about cyber organized crime let's start with the definition of international organized crime from the Department of Justice website uh, international organized crime refers to those self-perpetuating association of individuals who operate internationally for the purpose of obtaining power, influence, monetary and commercial gains wholly or in part by illegal means while protecting their activities through a pattern of corruption or violence. So there needs to be a pattern, pattern of corruption and violence in terms of the organized crime and it needs to be at the internet international level uh, for the pur purpose of obtaining power, influence, or monetary gains. And there's no single structure under which international organized crime groups operate. So they are distributed and they vary from strict hierarchies to blood clans, networks, and cells, and they may evolve to other structures. Organized crime might be involved in cybercrime, which would have important policing implications. Cybercrime is quite a complex matter and encompasses an extremely broad range of different crimes. Some can be accessed through an economic perspective uh, and while others are motivated by uh, ideology, passion, and even remains. So the motivation of organ cyber organized crime uh, can vary. And organized crimes are profit driven affecting the banking and financial sector as well as specifically fishing and uh, other methods 
to better counter, counter these types of criminal activities, more knowledge on the actors involved and their characteristics and modus operandi is needed to be uh, to be understood by the cybercrime investigators. So you need to understand basically the their modus, op modus operandi and also the groups involved in uh, criminal activities to organize crime. And many crimes and cyber crimes have some level of organization, and that is these crimes and cyber crimes are planned, rational acts that reflect the efforts of groups of individuals. And questions to understand cyber crime, cyber organized crime uh, can include what role does cyberspace play in helping criminals uh, or organize themselves? And also, how does cyberspace and its technologies transform organized crime behavior to create new forms of crime? So there could be a lot of questions from the standpoint of a researcher, and that, and, and that means we need to analyze the specific questions and help the policing and investigation systems to, to uh, uh, to help uh, and develop uh, their investigations. Organized crime uh, versus terrorism. Uh, many organized criminal groups uh, simply use internet technologies to communicate with one another um, and conduct their business. And alternatively, or organized criminal groups may use network technologies to create more sustained organizational forms as they have more resources uh, and they can establish better uh, network communication and or encrypt their communication through various methods. The, uh, um, while the activities of, of terrorists and organized criminals, uh, uh, organized criminal groups can overlap, they generally pursue different objectives. Terrorists primarily pursue political or social objectives and organized criminal groups primarily use financial or other material uh, benefits. So they might be using the similar tools, but uh, uh, terrorist groups have polit political agenda versus the organized group, uh, crime groups usually have financial and other material. Cybercrime also varies according to the mo modus operandi of the offending involved, which is linked uh, with the motivations and the profile of the criminal actors. The organization of cyber crimes against the machine, such as the misuse uh, offenses by hackers, and such as the attacks against the servers, are very different uh, uh, to cyber crimes using the machine, such as scams and fraud and extortion in terms of their modus of Criminal groups target individual users. Uh, they can uh, sometimes uh, use deceptive or send deceptive emails to scam or defraud them. And they also target business or governmental organizations to commit larger scale frauds, obtain uh, trade secrets, or to disrupt their business flaws. And state actors deliberately target the infrastructures of other states to create distrust or distrust or discontent or to cause harm. And uh, whether certain cyber crimes are identified as a form of organized crime or linked to organized crime depends on the working definitions used uh, of organized crime. So the definition of uh, organized crime varies by governments, and especially like it's like the, ter the definition of terrorism from one country to another country, the definition of both the organized crime and terrorism uh, changes. The United Nations Conventions Against the Transnational Organized Crime does not provide a definition of organized crime. Uh, this, is, uh, this is not just only the lack of agreements uh, amongst the states, but rather a conscious choice made by the negotiators, negotiators of the uh, convention. Studies on cyber organized crime shows us that some of the traditional features of cyber crime or, or cyber organized crime doesn't resonate uh, well to the cyberspace. For example, 
uh, the control of ter territory cannot be achieved through the cyber means. But uh, there are some uh, some uh, explanations to this that an organized criminal groups attempt to regulate and control the production and distribution of a given commodity or service unlawfully. Uh, this regulation uh, this regulation is a, uh, in fact for for example present in dark markets where the administrators and moderators monitor the site and content and ensure rules of the uh, platforms are strictly enforced and if rules are not obeyed those engaging uh, uh, in non-compliance are excluded from the site uh, the uh, punishments are not as harsh as uh, in traditional organized crime but there's a uh, negligence of the users and uh, uh, cancellation of the user credentials from the forum or system is very common. But there is some more examples I can add to that, that the, the cyber crime, especially the credit card fraud, can actually cause some violence as uh, the members of the organized crime group uh, uh, have conflict of interest and some may be threatened uh, to helping uh, police and the other issues may also uh, appear in an organized crime uh, group uh, that's uh, perpetrating uh, credit card fraud uh, can have some similar features to the uh, traditional forms of uh, traditional forms of organized crime and uh, in the case of dark mar dark markets the structure organization regulation and control over Listed goods and services are connected to the online sites and not the people who run and moderate them. As a result, when these mar dark markets uh, sites are taken offline, the network associated with the site often uh, stops. And two other features traditionally associated with uh, traditional organized criminal networks, corruption and threat of uh, threat or use of violence are highly associated and are viewed as not translating well to cyber organized crime. And research has shown that the political corruption influences decisions to participate in organized crime activities. In one country, online fraud, among other financial crimes, were found to be integral to the functioning of the states. Criminal groups engaging in cyber organized crime. Specifically, research has shown that the organized criminal groups have utilized information and communication technology to exploit new online criminal groups or markets. For example, in 2016, uh, members of uh, Kamora and Nidang Hita were arrested for their role in internet, internet gambling ring. Organized criminal groups have also engaged in several uh, cybercrime activities to facilitate offline organized crime activities. For example, an organized criminal group that trafficked drugs hired hackers to access to the information technology systems at the Antwerp port in Belgium that housed data about uh, the containers. And there are different types of cyber organized crime. Group one that predominantly operate online and commit cyber crimes. And uh, type two organized crime groups, cyber organized groups operate offline and online uh, and engage in crimes and cyber crimes. And the other group, the third group, only utilize information and communication technology to facilitate uh, offline crimes. And cybercrime, uh, organized crime activities include fraud, hacking, malware creation, DDoS attacks, blackmail, and sale of counterfeit or uh, falsified trademark products. Shadow Crew was an important website uh, that involved organized cr criminal activities. An international organization of approximately 4,000 members. 
promoted and facilitated a wide variety of criminal activities, including electronic theft of personal identifying information, credit card and debit card data, and fraud. Actually, credit card uh, fraud is a very big challenge for the criminal justice agencies. And the production and sale of false identification documents was uh, very common in the Shadow Creep website. And uh, nine years after uh, the uh, uh, closure of the website, Shadow uh, Creep feds get their hands on the fugitive, fugitive cyber crew. Nine years after uh, the Shadow Creep uh, carding firm was shuttered in a secret uh, service sitting operation. Sting operation, a Bulgarian charged with carding activities, has been uh, brought to the U.S. to face charges after nearly a decade uh, on the lam. And uh, Alexei Kolaro uh, was charged in 2004 in connection with an identity theft ring, accused of trafficking in more than a million stolen stolen bank numbers. We are talking about uh, more than a million stolen uh, bank. Uh, uh, card numbers. He was arrested in Paraguay in 2011 and has been held there ever since. And some of the cyber organized crime activities uh, uh, include bulletproof hosting services which enable criminals to utilize servers to commit cyber crime and does not remove criminal content from these servers. Because of low trust in criminal tra transactions online and the existence of scammer uh, escrow services provided by cyber organized criminal groups are high, uh, very high in demand. And escrow uh, services enable the funds uh, uh, criminal customers uh, pay for illicit goods and services to be sent only after they confirm the goods are uh, or services they paid for received in good order and the money laundering is another matter that's significant uh, and uh, very helpful indeed for the organized crime groups cyber organized criminals also provide money laundering as a service and money laundering uh, involves three stages placement of three stages placement of illicit proceeds in financial system concealment of the origin uh, of illicit funds and reintroducing the funds into the economy with concealed origin. So basically the target is to concealing the origin of the money and to make profit of uh, or make profit from the money earned. The cyber organized criminals have found new and creative ways to launder money such as Uber Ghost journey, Journeys and uh, for example, drivers receive funds from money launderers to accept right requests uh, from Uber uh, accounts at a pre-arranged price without the launderers actually uh, using the service. So they're, they're getting actually the money. And fake uh, Air, Airbnb rentals also another option for, uh, for cyber criminals to uh, launder money. And also crypto exchange, cryptocurrency exchange, and other method uh, money laundering has been utilizing it. Cyber organized criminals uh, use a semi-automated cryptocurrency ex exchange known, known as swappers and decentralized exchange, which do not require the identification and verif verification of users to launder the criminal proceeds. So this makes it uh, harder for criminal justice agencies to investigate cryptocurrency exchanges on uh, the internet. And another form that the organized crime groups use are mi micro laundering. Micro, micro laundering is a process whereby criminal launder large amounts of money by engaging numerous small transactions. So it, it becomes a lot more harder for the criminal agencies to uh, to find the origin of the uh, uh, money and online these types of transactions can occur can occur on commercial websites auction sites and 
even at the on the employment sites we can see uh, that uh, these websites were used for micro laundering information and communication technology have been used by, uh, by organized criminal groups to facilitate Tate, several types of crimes uh, such as smuggling of migrants and trafficking persons, wildlife, uh, uh, wildlife drugs, firearms and cigarettes trafficking uh, have also been uh, uh, facilitated through the use of information and communication technology. And the countermeasures to such crimes could be the involvement of law enforcement and prosecution efforts technical solutions and educational campaigns and criminal justice efforts include the monitoring of online sites that facilitate cyber organized crime and promote the services of cyber organized criminals uh, or the takedown of these websites and prosecutions of these those engaging in uh, cyber organized crimes are the general culture measures that could be utilized against the criminals and Alpha Bay is an example uh, to these kinds of investigations. Prior to its seizure by the FBI in 2017, uh, Alpha Bay operated for over two years and had at its peak over 350,000 uh, listings for illicit goods and services and appro approximately 40,000 vendors. This is a lot of vendor. I mean, in a traditional uh, given way, these kinds of crimes couldn't be possible without the use of internet and the dark web. And dark web gives a lot of opportunity for criminals to distribute illicit goods and services. And can you imagine how much traffic in illicit activity had taken place uh, there? By comparison, the Silk Road the dark web, the Silk Road dark web market seized by law enforcement in 2013 that was the largest at the time by the way had only 14,000 listings and approximately uh, 6,200 vendors and when we look at the number of uh, vendors in Alpha Bay it's a lot more than and this actually uh, gives us an idea and the trend the use of dark web actually gives more uh, people more opportunity and uh, the other thing is that the US Postal Service for instance only has uh, 1200 employees to impact inspect packages but uh, considering millions of uh, millions of uh, packages uh, being delivered every day it's very hard to inspect every package and the criminals can take advantage of delivering their illicit uh, illicit materials to the delivery of uh, postal services. And uh, the US led investigation uh, targeted Alpha Bay and when it was seized, users of the platform migrated to another crypto market, market Hansa, which uh, uh, unbeknownst to them was under the uh, control of the Dutch police who was conducting an undercover operation to identify and disrupt illicit activities committed on the darknet side. So basically this uh, gives you an, another idea how the police actually operate to investigate uh, cyber organized crime where sometimes the website uh, uh, was already uh, uh, developed by a criminal group but later on uh, seized by the government agency or police agency and operated by the police agency and the IP information and uh, communication information is collected by the uh, law enforcement agency which leads to the uh, arrest of uh, hundreds or uh, from time to time thousands of individual uh, individuals operating uh, under the uh, dark website and this uh, migration enabled Dutch authority authorities to identify and, and investigate these individuals before the platform was shut down in July 2017 so what we are seeing is a lot of operations and 
police uh, raids uh, have been going around the dark web and dark web has become uh, sort of an opportunity uh, for uh, police agencies to uh, take down the websites and track down the criminals and uh, dark web is not certainly a secure place for criminals to exchange illicit contrabands or illicit drugs. Because Alpha Bay operated on the anonymous Tor network, administrator were, administrators were confident they could hide the locations of the site's servers and identities of users. But what they understood uh, is that according to the FBI, law enforcement was monitoring their activity said FBI Special Agent Chris Thomas. But they felt so protected by the dark web technology that they thought they could get away with their crimes. So that's when the criminals uh, uh, gets, uh, uh, get arrested. They trust themselves or they trust the platform they use and then they get arrested. The FBI and its partners used a combination of traditional investigative techniques along with sophisticated new tools to break the case and dismantle uh, Alpha Bay. And the message to the criminals was that don't think that you are safe because you are on the dark web. There are no corners of the dark web where you can hide. So th that's what the FBI agent told. And yes, there are some challenges because of the encryption method, but there are all, always some configuration problems. And sometimes police sees the uh, servers and uh, use the server and then take the logs and uh, arrest the criminals. So it's not that easy. They may get some leverage, but in the end they'll get arrested. Uh, using the undercover agents and involving the uh, surreptitious, uh, surreptitious monitoring of these uh, sites and user activities and publicizing of these operations can help er eroding the trust uh, into those uh, uh, dark web pages, as uh, the trust relationship is very important in organized crime activities and as the criminals realize that they are being tra traced and tracked uh, down by the government uh, employees or agents or out undercovers, then they're less likely to engage in such criminal activities. Thank you very much, uh, you all, for listening to this session. Please feel free to connect uh, me and email me uh, if you have a question concerning the lecture and the content, content of the lecture. I'll post more information online uh, that you can uh, utilize uh, as a research uh, tool uh, for your understanding the organized crime and uh, cyber terrorism. Thank you. Have a nice weekend.